Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. We are finally back from Ohio. Uh, as you probably already know, we went up to Kirtland, Ohio to watch the eclipse. I didn't take this picture. Uh, there was a subscriber of mine. In fact, I ran into a number of subscribers while we were there. This is um, Floyd Gowans and he took the picture. Uh, I originally posted it on Facebook and YouTube, but it had, as you can see, all these power lines right here. Uh, so I I uh, edited it and this is what we have. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to work with it a little bit more, but for right now, this is good. So this is what we all saw, all of us that were up there. It was breathtaking. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, I have more uh, that I'm putting on here, you know, 360s and panoramas and videos and so forth of the Kirtland Temple. Uh, there was a lot to see. I put my um, landscape video of the eclipse on Facebook, but I also have it on uh, on YouTube right here. So when I did the live stream, it was up and down. Uh, it, it just with live streams, it's easier to do it up and down because I can. It's easier to hold the phone and read the chat. Uh, that's the main thing is reading the chat. But I also, with my wife's phone, simultaneously did it landscape. So if you want to watch it again and have like a better view, like on your TV, then you can watch this. I'll put the link for it in the description box below. But yeah, I ran into Floyd, and thank you, Floyd, if you're watching this for taking that picture and the other pictures that you sent me. Um, I also ran into just a number of other people. I'm going to put, uh, post these photos on Facebook with their names, but it was just amazing, uh, how many were there, uh, both my subscribers and just, uh, people in general is a real, it was a really powerful event. Uh, I talked about it later that day. I did a live stream, uh, relaying my, my, just what I was feeling. And, uh, the only way that I can really describe it is in a picture like this, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I felt. This is what I felt like as it was. Well, even before like totality, I was like starting to feel. I was starting to glow um, as it, it began and the temperature started to drop. I could feel something in the air. But by the time of totality, this is what I looked like, and everybody else that was there, and uh, it's still with me. You know, it started to kind of dim a little bit. But uh, this morning, uh, you know, I, again, I, I woke up and <laughs> as I started to prepare this video talking about uh, President Holland's talk, like, it, it, you know, it, it came back to full strength. So this is what I'm at. Like, I'm back to this level right now. Um, he gave an amazing talk and I wanted to, th there's going to be s so much to unpack over the next like days and weeks and months. Th this general conference was something else. The eclipse at the Kirtland temple uh, obviously was, was something else. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. Here's like the original, see the, the power lines. I really hope the church is able to get the city to, uh, some people said that it's possible to like just bat to bury the power lines, but something has to be done because it, it looks horrible the way that it is right now. So hopefully someday in the future, it'll look like this, no power lines right in front of the face of the temple. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was a, so a lot to unpack. I, I, I'm still trying to process this experience. Um, like, like I said in my live stream, it felt like a like a Pentecostal experience. I didn't see angels. I don't know that anybody else did either, but the spirit was very, very strong. It was a very intense event, and uh, there's a lot to process. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's look at President Holland's talk where he said some pretty amazing things, and it, it was an amazing way to start this conference. Uh, the name of the talk is Motions of a Hidden Fire which uh, I love the title of that talk. Uh, for me and Jenica, we, we've been like having a lot of like little, <clears throat> just kind of like fire signs and stuff like uh, where it just feels like little signs that, you know, the second coming is soon, you know, cause the, the world is going to be burned by fire. It's going to be cleansed. And so I, for that reason, I love the name of his talk. I also love the name of Christian fire poppies channel because she has the, the fire in there and <laughs> she has such an amazing channel. I love her. Okay, so he first talks about the fact that 
you know, he gave his his last talk October 2022, and he kind of like makes a joke out of it. But what's interesting is that that was a very it seems that that was a very pivotal general conference. The reason why is because in the uh, area devotional for Alberta and British Columbia, President Nelson and Sister Nelson spoke, and she said that there were a lot of attacks that year on the church. They knew that uh, October 2022 general conference would be a uh, I can't remember how she worded it. I have it written down somewhere, but that it'd basically be like a pivotal conference. And that was the conference where President Nelson said really incredible things, uh, such as between now and the time that Christ comes again, and he references the sign of the Son of Man in the footnotes, we're going to see the most powerful manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. And uh, certainly one of those is this event right here. First, the purchase of the, of the Kirtland Temple which I didn't think would happen that this would come back into the church until the millennium. Frankly, that's the only way that I saw it happening. But nope. Uh, just last month, a month before the eclipse, and we got a picture like this, that's when it came back to the church. And then this eclipse occurred. Right? So he said that um, during the October 2022 General Conference. It's also the conference where President Nelson uh, called on us to be the people of the second coming. So he starts out the talk like that, in, and then it gets really crazy. He's, he, uh, he talks about the passing of his wife, <coughs> excuse me, and then he says, Another experience began 48 hours after my wife's burial. At that time, I was rushed to the hospital in, a, in an acute medical crisis. I then spent the first four weeks of a six-week stay in and out of intensive care, intensive care and in and out of of consciousness virtually all my experience in and he puts this in italics in virtually so this is to like listen to this this he's, listen to what he's saying because I, I, some people i think it would just like go over their heads people that maybe don't think in this kind of way like spiritually and miracles and things like that virtually all my experience experience in the hospital during the last during that first period is lost to my memory what was not, and he puts that in italics, what is not lost is my memory of the journey outside, and he puts that in italics, uh, a journey outside the hospital, out of what seemed, out to what seemed the edge of eternity. So this was a near-death experience. He, he says that he, was, he made a journey outside the hospital. If he was just unconscious, he'd be in, you know, his spirit would be inside the hospital. But he's saying that he went outside the hospital. We know that his body was in the hospital, so he, he can only be referring to uh, his spirit. That's the other part that could leave the hospital while your body is in the hospital. Okay. He says, I cannot speak fully of that experience here. Oh, and sorry, by the way, David B. Hey, I did a video about this. Let me see if I can, let me find it really quick. This is something I didn't know until I did this, until I made this channel. Um, David B. Hate, who was also an apostle, David B. Hate, in the 80s. I'll put the link for this in the description box below. I go over um, what he shared in general conference. And he, he like vividly painted what he saw uh, during his talk. It was very descriptive and very visual. I, I'm astounded that a near-death experience was shared in general conference uh, i go over his near-death experience there was also a near-death experience of someone uh, another apostle of the early church I, if i remember right i think it was a member of the first presidency so i go over both of those stories in this video i'll put the link for it in the description box below in case you want to check that out and you, and you should you really should but so w when when he said this i i was like what what here we have, I just did this video. How long was this video? It was uh, just six months ago. Just six months ago. This was like around the time of uh, the, the uh, October 2023 General Conference that I did this video. And then here, uh, President Oaks is talking about the fact, or President uh, Holland is talking about the fact that he had a near-death experience. So I cannot speak fully of that experience here, but I can say that, I can say that part of, what I received was an admonition to return to my ministry with more urgency 
more consecration, more focus on the Savior, more faith in his word. I couldn't help but feel I was receiving my own personal version of a, re- of a revelation given to the Twelve nearly 200 years ago, so within our own dispensation. And he reads part of that scripture. I'm going to pull it up. So this takes us to uh, DNC section 112. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet to, Do- to Thomas B. Marsh at Kirtland, Ohio, July 23rd, 1837, concerning the 12 apostles of the Lamb. This revelation was received on the day elders Heber C. Kimball and Orson Hyde first preached the gospel in England. Thomas B. Marsh was at this time president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Okay, so <coughs> here are the verses that he selected. He didn't read the full verses, so he just uh, read part of them. Let thy heart be of good cheer before my face, and thou shalt bear record of my name, not only unto the Gentiles, but also unto the Jews. See my playlist called um, Times of the Gentiles. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about that. Uh, Please go watch it. And thou shalt send forth my word unto the ends of the earth. Contend thou therefore morning by morning and day after day. Let thy warning voice go forth. And when the night cometh, let not the inhabitants of the earth slumber because of thy speech. And then later on, uh, this, these are the two verses before the next verse that he cited. And pray for thy brethren of the twelve. Admonish them sharply for my name's sake. And let them be admonished for all their sins. And be, be ye faithful before me unto my name. Now, I, you know, he didn't, like he said, he didn't give us all the details about this. But he said that he, he received an admonition to return to the ministry with more urgency, consecration, focus on the Savior, faith in his word. So it may have been along the lines of what's being said right here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm not, I'm not, believe me, I'm not saying that President Holland is like bad or lacking in faith or, or whatever, but there's always a time for being admonished, even like when you're doing good, because sometimes you can, you can take it to the next level. So admonish them sharply for my name's sake and let them be admonished for all their sins and be ye faithful before me unto my name. And after their temptations and much tribulation, behold, I, the Lord, will feel after them. And if they harden not their hearts and stiffen not their necks against me, <clears throat> they shall be converted and I will heal them. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now I say unto you, and what I say unto you, I say unto all the twelve, arise and gird up your loins, take up your cross, follow me and feed my sheep. And then later in this section, I, again, I don't know if, What's said here was included in his experience, but it's in the same section, starting in verse 23. Verily, verily, I say unto you, darkness covereth the earth, and gross darkness the minds of the people, and all flesh has become corrupt before my face. Behold, vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth. Now imagine if this was like also said to President Holland, especially now, 200 years later. Behold, vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth, a day of wrath, a day of burning, a day of desolation, of weeping, of mourning, and of lamentation. And as a whirlwind, it shall come upon all the face of the earth, saith the Lord. And upon my house shall it begin, and from my house shall it go forth, saith the Lord. First among those of you, sorry, first among those among you, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name and have not known me. And have blasphemed against me in the midst of my house, saith the Lord. I mean, that sounds like, uh, that part sounds like what he said in the talk. And by the way, I also did a video about this. Um, Upon my house shall it begin, something like that. Um, I think I think there's a lot of misconceptions around this as well. I did a, a study into what that means and it's referring to the the separation of the wheat and the tares. Okay, just like it says here, those that profess to know my name, so the tares, the ones that are in the church, but they're not really like at heart members of the church or they're just, they just go through the motions, they don't really believe it. Uh, they're part of the church for other reasons, you know, and then you have the, the true wheat. So um, anyway, 
And then was there anything else? No, nothing else from that. Okay, so let's go back to the talk. Okay, so I couldn't help but feel I was receiving my own personal version of a revelation given to the 12 nearly 200 years ago. So we just read some of that. My beloved sisters and brothers, since that experience, I have tried to take up my cross more earnestly with more resolve to find where I can raise an apostolic voice of both warmth and warning in the morning, during the day, and into the night. And I, I, w- I wish I could see exactly what he means because, you know, as, a, as an apostle, you have the opportunity to speak in general conference like he's doing right here. Uh, sometimes you travel to different places and I, I don't know what determines when they decide to go visit a country. It seems like it comes by assignment from the first presidency. It seems if you know more about that, let me know. But obviously he comes into contact with people in his personal life and I'm sure he does a lot there and, and we should too, you and me. And by the way, uh, on that note, uh, the book of Mormon uh, flood the earth challenge where we're sharing copies of the book of mormon it, it, i'm gonna I'm, now that i'm back i'm getting settled back in and this week i plan to get this updated but if you haven't seen this we're sharing copies of the book of mormon and keeping track of it uh, i'm not keeping track of like baptisms or shares of the book of mormon that would have happened otherwise i'm, I'm trying to tra- i'm trying to get you and me to share copies of the book of mormon that we otherwise would not have shared in baptisms that otherwise would not have taken place. This is a motivational tool and exercise. So when you share one, let me know in the comments or send me an email. Make sure to include hashtag flood. And remember, the easiest way right now to share the Book of Mormon is using the Gospel Library app. Go to scriptures and you'll see a share button for the Book of Mormon app. Okay, so we need to do this too. Okay, later in the talk, so he talks... A lot about prayer. I'm not going to read the whole talk, though, of course. He says, If we ask not amiss, there are no limits to when, where, or about what we should pray. According to the revelations, we are to pray always. We are to pray, Amulek said, for those who are around you, with the belief that the fervent prayer of a righteous people availeth much. Now, I have this paragraph highlighted because... I had done, I'll pull this up too. I had done a video called uh, Secret, let's see, Secret Channel of Prayer. Right here, are you using the Secret Channel of Prayer? Where in a different general conference, there was a general authority. It was a 70, I believe, uh, Elder Francis M. Gibbons, who talked about uh, being careful with your prayers because the adversary can hear your prayers out loud. And we've been given this uh, secret channel of prayer because Satan doesn't know the thoughts of your mind. He doesn't have access to your thoughts. And so he was saying, you know, uh, pray that way so that Satan can't use your prayers against you. Um, but in this talk by uh, President President Holland, he says, our prayers ought to be vocal when we when we have the privacy to so offer them. So I'm going to go with what President Holland is saying. One, uh, because of his priesthood office, he's the president, the acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And it's a more recent talk. And it's not to say that uh, what Elder Francis M. Gibbons said was wrong. Maybe that was more correct for that time. Or maybe, you know, when we're talking about something very, very sensitive or or whatever that we, that Satan shouldn't hear, uh, maybe you should use discretion. But... I just want to emphasize that President Holland says our prayers ought to be vocal when we have the privacy to so offer them. And uh, that's one thing I really enjoy about my house and my property. You know, we have a couple acres. We live on the edge of a town, of our our small town. And um, there's a lot of privacy outside. I, I typically do go outside and pray. I have a nice, really big cement driveway, which I, I love. Um, and I'll go out there and pray there. We also have like this, it's kind of like a lean to it's or like a shed barn type thing in the pasture at the back of the property. Sometimes I go there or we have like our, you know, our garage and stuff and, um, which is out away from the house. So I think it's really important to pray 
out loud. The reason why is because it helps you organize your thoughts because that's the thing, like uh, whether it's prayer or whether you're trying to process emotions or experiences that you've had, you can like think about them and meditate about them silently. But when you talk to like a, a trusted friend about an experience you had or, or emotions that you're feeling, it forces you, language forces you to piece it together in a coherent way using like logic because when it's in your mind it's just kind of like swirling around and it's just like emotions and there's not like a ton of structure and so by speaking it gives those things structure and helps you think logically about them so I think that that's that's really important with prayer so I'm glad that he said this okay continuing if that is not practical, they should be carried as silent utterances in our heart. Uh, we sing that prayers are motions of a hidden fire, and that's the name. <laughs> maybe that's the name of his talk, and that comes from um, hymn number one forty-five. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire. Okay, always to be offered according to the Savior. Or sorry always to be offered according to the Savior himself to God the Father in the name of his only begotten Son. Because I guess in recent years there's been question about who you should pray to. Uh, there's been like a... Anyway, the, the, the point is you, we should direct our prayers to God the Father. Not to Jesus Christ, not to Heavenly Mother, not to, uh, not to the saints, not to your favorite uh, Book of Mormon prophet or otherwise. It should be to... God the Father. Okay, now, <laughs> this is where things really get serious. This is toward the end of his talk. Against that backdrop of Christ's victory over death in his recent gift to me, now this is, this like stood out so much when he said this, his recent gift to me of a few more weeks or months in mortality. So there was some question when I was doing the live stream, uh, if he like if he was like talking to us to us, uh, just him and us, like you know we don't know if we have a few more weeks or or a few more months. I think someone had said something along those lines in the live stream, but no, it looks like he's talking about himself personally, President Holland. His recent gift to me, President Holland, of a few more weeks or months in mortality, and uh, he doesn't say years. I, I don't know what his condition is, but he must have it, you know, on good authority from his physicians that, uh, that it's a few more weeks or months. So it'll be interesting to see if he, I mean, it, that would make it seem like it, like this is his last year, 2024. So pray for him. I would love for him to stick around. Of course, it's according to according to the will of the Father and the Lord and in their plan for him. But that was kind of shocking when he said that. And I can't, I can't imagine the church without President Holland. I really can't. Uh, I bear solemn witness of the reality of eternal life and the need for us to be serious in our planning for it. So now he's talking about how we, we need, to, this is a warning. This is a big warning. And he ties it into the second coming. So, of course, there's always the possibility of us passing away. Any day, you could wake up, think everything's fine, uh, have some kind of accident. Okay. He says, I bear witness that when Christ comes, okay, like the second coming, I bear witness when Christ comes, he needs to recognize us not as nominal members listed on a faded baptismal record, but as thoroughly committed, faithfully believing, covenant-keeping disciples. Another way that you could say this is we need to be the five wise virgins and not the five foolish virgins. And unfortunately, you know them, I know them, People that are members of the church, but they no longer come, or maybe they do come, but they're not keeping their covenants, whether that's, you know, wearing the temple garment, whether that's how they treat people, you know, they may do everything right, but they don't, they don't treat people well, they lie, they manipulate, 
Uh, they do things uh, in their private life that are not in accordance with the covenants that they made. So there's a lot of different ways to be foolish. So don't think that it's just like people that are inactive or less active or whatever. It could, you could be a fully active person doing everything, paying tithing, but you're doing other th other things behind the scenes and you're not living um, the principles taught to us on the Mount of um, the, the Sermon on the Mount of like, we need to have love in our hearts. We need to love people and we need to do things not for recognition, but do things because we have become love and we have become justice, justice and truth and mercy. Like we've made those, we've internalized those things and become those things. We're not just performing those things to get credit uh, from, from the observers in our lives. Uh, that's what the that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. They did things for the praise of men, for attention, for validation, for for stuff like that. Uh, maybe for power and, and control. So, okay. So, and then he says, "This is an urgent matter." Again, he just talked about the second coming. This is an urgent matter for all of us, lest we ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> the devastating regret, I never knew you. Or, uh, as Joseph Smith translated that phrase, you never knew me. I think they're both equally good. You, you get the idea. It's like you're you're not really, you're not really doing it. You may look like you are, but you're not. So, continuing, fortunately... We have help for this task. Lots of help. He's, then he says, we need to believe in angels. Now, I'm going to have to do another video about this. and we, We've talked about this in the live stream. There was a lot of talk about angels this general conference. <laughs> okay. There was a, lo a lot of talk about angels. I'm pretty sure more than any other general conference that I've ever, I've ever participated in or witnessed or listened to. Um, that really stands out to me. We've talked about it before on the channel. You know, we've pointed to the scriptures that talk about it, specifically the, um, I think it's the Kirtland Temple dedicatory prayer where it talks about the fact that uh, angels have charge over you when you go to the temple. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That, okay. When we went to the Kirtland Temple, before the eclipse, this was so awesome. Before the eclipse, we were able to take a tour. This was such a special experience for me, you guys. And I hope that you can live it, live this experience through me and me sharing this with you. Um, me being your proxy, you know, with these videos and pictures and telling these stories. So we went through took the the tour and uh you know the missionary said that this this <coughs> excuse me this temple does not need to be rededicated the original dedication still stands now my question as far as like I, I don't know if that's the same as um a temple being commissioned because i know there's the idea of being commissioned and decommissioned so for example uh, the Salt Lake Temple is currently in a state of being decommissioned. President Nelson talked about that in one of his talks. He used that as an object lesson. He he was like, right, you know, right now the Salt Lake Temple is decommissioned for renovations, uh, but I want you to never become decommissioned from your temple uh, covenants that you made. Always remain in a state of being commissioned, right? So uh, the, if anyone knows... If you have any further knowledge on this, let me know if they consider this a commissioned temple. Obviously, it has a different purpose from other temples in the church because you don't go there to do baptisms for the dead or endowments or things like that. And we don't know uh, what functions it may have in the millennium. And I don't mean to be a broken record, but I, I need to say this because I think a lot of people don't understand this, this concept. Let's see. Joseph Smith Papers... Um, revised city plat. New Jerusalem 
if it had been built back in, I guess, like starting 1833 or 1834, this would be the city, a city of 15 to, or 10, or yeah, 15 to 10 to 20,000 people. Okay. And after the city is built up, you would build another city after the same pattern. And in fact, Kirtland was somewhat built this way. Uh, it's almost like it was like kind of like a precursor to, uh, the new Jerusalem. And then Brigham Young initially was starting to build Salt Lake city this way. But anyway, had it been built, there would have been 24 temples and the plans are on here. They're on the Joseph Smith papers. Let's just look at that. Joseph Smith papers, um, revised house of the Lord. Yeah. Right here. Those temples were going to look like the Kirtland temple. They're going to be very similar looking. Let me go to this next page. There's like the inside and you'll recognize this, you know, you have the pulpits right here and there's like an assembly room. And, uh, I don't know if this would have been just like the, the plan for the, for the first temple, like the main temple, uh, which my interest here is like the front view. See, it looks just like the Kirtland temple. Um, this temple right here, number 11, uh, from what I've seen, it, it seems like that would have been the main temple. That's the one that the, the Church of Christ Temple lot, they own uh, this lot right here. And then the Independence Visitor Center was built to be a temple, to be one of these temples at some future date. It'll be renovated. I don't know if they'll make it look like the Kirtland Temple or kind of leave it as it is, but it was, it was built according to the specifications, the, the length and the width and, and all that. Um, the community of Christ owns this property up here. They have their temple right here. And then the auditorium, uh, for the community of Christ is down here. So we basically need all that land, but in the millennium, I, I can only assume that new Jerusalem will be built after this pattern. That's why they consulted this plan when they built the independence visitor center. And these temples will have different functions, some for uh, education, some for administration and just various purposes. So, the Kirtland Temple, uh, I, I'm assuming that it is going to has have some kind of function. Maybe there will be more temples built around there. Maybe it will have a 24 temple complex. I, I don't know. But anyway, let's bring it back full circle. What I was saying was going through the Kirtland Temple and doing the tour, coming out, I feel like maybe that that is still in force when you go into the Kirtland Temple. Like it's a different type of temple. Uh, we currently do public tours, but I, I think that angels have attended me and everybody else that went through there after going in. Uh, if, if you've taken the tour, uh, let me know if you feel like that's true. I, I won't be able to say that authoritatively, but I think it might be true. You maybe don't just have to go to one of our regular temples. Maybe going into the current temple, you get the same blessings. Um, you know, we obviously get additional protection when we do our, our own endowments. But beyond that, every time that we return to the temple, we still, it's like you come out with new protection and new angels with charge over you, I think. So, yeah, angels. Angels. Okay, let's go back to this. So, fortunately, we have help for this task. Lots of help. We need to believe in angels and miracles and the promises of the holy priesthood we need to believe in the gift of the holy ghost the influence of good families and friends and the power of the pure love of christ we need to believe in the in revelation and prophets and seers and revelators and president russell nelson we need to believe that with prayer and pleading and personal righteousness we really can ascend to Mount, quote, Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly place, the holiest of all. And as soon as I heard that, I I wanted to know what scripture that was. And it turns out that it's section 76 that talks about the three degrees of glory. And uh, it's in the part where it's talking about the celestial kingdom, but it says some interesting things in here uh, that I think he is alluding to. Verse 50, and again, we bear record for we saw and heard, and this is the testimony of the gospel of Christ concerning them who have come forth in the resurrection of the just. So we're talking about the celestial uh, crowd, the celestial group. 
They are they who received the testimony of Jesus and believed on his name and were baptized after the manner of his burial, being buried, (coughs) sorry, buried in the water in his name. And this according to the commandment which he has given, that by keeping the commandments, they might be washed and cleansed from all their sins and receive the Holy Spirit by the laying on of the hands of him who was ordained and sealed unto this power and who overcome by faith and are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise which the Father sheds forth upon all those who are just and true. Uh, They are they who are the church of the firstborn, right? And we know, because later on it it talks about Enoch, you know, Enoch is part of, Enoch and his city and Melchizedek and all the righteous saints uh, that have obtained exaltation. Uh, They are the church of the firstborn. And uh, we can be too if we're living celestially. So think celestial, right? They are they into whose hands the Father has given all things. They are they who are priests and kings who have received his fullness and of his glory and are priests of the Most High after the order of Melchizedek, which was after the order of Enoch, which was after the order of the only begotten Son. Wherefore, it is written, they are God's, even the sons of God. Wherefore, all things are theirs, their lo- whether in life or death, Uh, or things present or things to come, all are theirs and they are Christ's and Christ is God's and they shall overcome all things. Wherefore, let no man glory in man, but rather let him glory in God who shall subdue all enemies under his feet. And these dwell in the presence of God and his Christ forever and ever. Now here are um, the three verses before the one that he cite that president Holland cites in his talk immediately be- before he says that it says, these are they whom he shall bring with him when he shall come in the clouds of heaven to reign on the earth over his people. These are they who shall have part in the first resurrection. These are they who shall come forth in the resurrection of the just. And then Verse 66 is the one that he cites in the talk. These are they who come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the the heavenly place, the holiest of all. These are they, and then immediately after, these are they who have come to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of Enoch and of the firstborn. So he, he, he quotes a scripture that is in the surrounding verses is talking about the second coming and the resurrection of the righteous and the city of Enoch. We know that they're going to be there. We're going to meet with the city of Enoch. Um, whether that means structures and land, some people kind of take that point of view. I, I don't really, I think it just means the people because that's what makes the city is people. It could be land. It could be streets. I don't know, but and I know, I know what's been said about the Gulf of Mexico and whatever. I'm going to do like another video about that sometime. Um, but they're going to come and I, and I, I, I can't help but wonder, <laughs> you guys, I can't help but wonder if like the reason why they're talking so much about angels right now is what if that process is beginning that these angels are from the city of Enoch, uh, also you know, Melchizedek in his city, also all the righteous that uh, have to this point been resurrected. Keep in mind, I'm not going to go over the whole thing here. I've done videos about this before. Enoch in his city, Melchizedek in his city, everyone that was translated before the resurrection were translated because the resurrection had not happened yet. But they, they, they were, in the case of Enoch in his city and Melchizedek in his city, is because they were so righteous that they might as well have been worthy to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. As for others like Moses, Elijah, people like that, they were translated because you have to have a physical body for some reason to pass on your piece, your priesthood keys. It wouldn't have worked if they if they died. Uh, that's what what we've studied. So, but at the time that Christ was resurrected these people from before who had been translated were changed in the twinkling of an eye, just like we will be during the millennium after we reach a hundred years of age. So at this point they are resurrected. 
the only people right now that we know of that are translated in doing stuff on the earth right now is John the Revelator as well as the three Nephites and they're you know very well could be that there's more that we don't know about either way it seems that whether you're translated or resurrected you have the power to be seen or unseen and um so it's just a really interesting idea I think there might be something to it. It, it some of these angels may be the city of Enoch that are attending us as we leave the temple and then at some point they'll come openly with Christ and meet with New Jerusalem the church and be seen so that's something to, something to think about and then well let's cut it off here because it's yeah, let's just cut it off here because it's getting a little bit longer than what I thought, uh, as is usually the case. And then the last part of his talk, he says, uh, Then with Job and all the refined faithful, we will behold a world too wonderful to understand. Um, someone had pointed out in one of the live streams that Job came up quite a bit this conference. So I'm going to have to do probably another video about that. We all know the story of Job. He was put through a lot of trials. Again, I think that we've already been put through a lot of trials ever since the church was restored. Uh, it's probably going to increase. I'm not looking for like this dramatic, like, oh my gosh, now we're in the tribulations. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to just probably gradually increase until Christ comes. So uh, I think that we should be optimistic and just be firm in our minds and aware that these these things are, are coming for us but we'll be okay live righteously do what you can to, to prepare temporally it's going to be okay all right so what we're going to have to do just like every conference I, I you have i have to wait or we have to wait for like usually about a month or two before it's updated in the scripture citation index this is a website where you can search the scriptures but you can also search talks uh, from General Conference, Journal of Discourses, and also the book called Scriptural Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, compiled by Joseph Fielding Smith. And um, I, this is something that I do. I, I, sur I use this to search General Conference talks and do all sorts of things, uh, inclu including um, uh, doing a tally of like all the talks that include these different words and phrases. So I'm going to do that for angels. I'm going to do it for Job as well as every other term that I've ever searched. Let me show you what, what I'm talking about if you're new. If you go to my spreadsheet, uh, the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. If you go down to timeline phrases, um, I have all these words and phrases that I've searched um, from all the general conferences going all the way back till 1942. That's where the cutoff is for the scripture citation index. And I hope that at some point in the future, they add more. Uh, I don't know if they're able to. I, I don't know why it was cut off in 1942. If you want to contact BYU, that'd be great. Maybe I'll do it as well. I want to see more. It's an amazing website. But anyway, by doing this exercise, uh, you can you can see patterns and you can see another another layer of the story of all these general conferences. Like, look at... Uh, 2022 king benjamin for some reason was coming up just all the time 14 times compared to like you know you go back in the past and there's a few other years where it's like really high like 1990 but uh king benjamin was the talk in 2022 um you have other things like different phrases and stuff that don't, haven't shown up for a long time like the phrase hour is not yet you have to go back to 2004 uh, to see that used. And it was used a lot more frequently back in time. But it has suddenly disappeared from General Conference since 2004. So, uh, so we'll have to give it a couple months before it shows up in the Scripture Citation Index. But in the meantime, I'll do what I can and uh, just scour through this. And I hope that you do too, and that you share your insights with me. Ideally, send me an email if you find something interesting, and um, and then you know if it's if I feel like it's good and of, uh, like of real value for the for the channel and for the audience, 
then I'll do a video about it and mention you. So uh, again, I, I was so happy to have met so many of you. Not every, I didn't get a picture with everybody. Some people showed up in the live stream that I was doing of the eclipse as it was happening. But um, uh, it's so great to meet actual people, to actually meet you in person. And it just, it makes me feel a lot closer to you. And it puts a lot more love in my heart. And it just makes me feel like this channel is that much more worth it. <laughs> Instead of just, like I said, speaking to my computer screen. It's not that. It's getting to, to you. I love it. Uh, consider following me or liking my Facebook page. There's additional content that I put on here that I can't really, I can't put on YouTube, like these, uh, you know, panoramic photos and other just like small videos and stuff like that. Family pictures, whatever. 360 photo bubbles like this one. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.